Hello everybody, it's Chrissy from Chrissy's Corner for Collectors and it's Saturday and it's a holiday weekend and um, it's getting really hot outside in Arizona so we're probably going to hit the hundreds this weekend. So today I'm going to do a couple things around the house. I'm going to organize my pantry a little bit better and um, I have a lot of tomatoes from my garden, not a lot, maybe eight right now. And so I thought, well, before they go bad, um, I need to do something with them. One of my favorite snacks is bruschetta. Oh, and by the way, I have my apron on so that Donna doesn't get upset because she thinks I have dirty clothes. Hi, Donna. Um, so I didn't have enough to do a couple jars of bruschetta. So I went and bought some extra tomatoes and I'll show you all that in a second. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I love bruschetta. Um, I think it's a really crisp, clean, light snack, and it's great for the summertime. But um, I found a recipe where you could jar it. You have to do a little bit of um, finagling, so I'm going to do that with you and show you what we're going to do. This is my first time doing it, so again, I'm not afraid to try it, but I don't know how it's going to come out, so we'll see. Okay, so the classic bruschetta has tomatoes so like this one is from my garden and it had a bad spot in it so I'm gonna have to cut all that out another one from my garden they're not huge another one from my garden so I'm going to use some Roma tomatoes for bruschetta because I'm gonna be jarring it I don't want it to turn to mush and so the Roma tomatoes are good for that I've got a red onion I've got some fresh thyme and oregano that I just picked from the garden and washed that's why it's on this paper towel and then just for kicks, to give it still that little bit of body, I have two cucumbers from my garden that I just washed. So I'm gonna add that to this too. I'm not sure how that'll turn out, but we'll see. I mean, it's cucumbers, it's pickles, so jarring it should be fine. Here I have um, some filtered water. And in here I also have vinegar, red wine vinegar, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, a little bit of salt, and um, pretty much that's it in there, okay? That's gonna be my brine that I use. So I have the water bottles starting to heat up and sanitize, so that's going. So let me start chopping this up. You don't need to watch me chop this. Let me chop it all up, get it ready, so that we can get ready to can our bruschetta. So I'm gonna do the most time-consuming part first, is I'm gonna get my fresh herbs uh, ready and off the stem. I have fresh thyme that I grow and I dehydrate. You've seen some of those videos. And then I have oregano also cooking out, uh, not cooking, <laughs> growing, silly. It's Saturday, my mind's off. Um, my oregano is a variegated oregano. It works really good for the hot temperatures here. So you can see it has some white on the edges of it. That's my variegated oregano. And the leaves are very tiny, which is nice because, um, I don't have to do a lot of cutting up with the oregano. So basically I'm just pulling it off the stems. And again, the reason I'm doing this first is because it's a little time consuming and you don't need to watch me do that. So I'm pulling the thyme and the oregano off and just sticking it in this bowl. Um, and then the rest of it, whatever I don't use, I will uh, dehydrate together and then I will add it to my Italian seasoning bottle. So, what you don't see that I didn't pull out yet is the um, garlic powder, but I'll show you that part when we get closer to doing the actual jarring. So again, I'm just pulling the leaves off. This is for flavor. You could use dried uh, Italian uh, herbs, but I have these growing and I don't want them to, you know, be wasted and so, that's why I'm using the, the fresh ones. So again, that's really all that's going in there is that. And I wanna make sure that I don't use any leaves that are browned or that are older. I want nice, fresh, young leaves. And, and again, that's as big as these leaves get. So they're kind of tiny. I have allergies, I'm sorry if I'm sniffling. 
the allergy season is here in Arizona. It's been here for a couple days now and it's awful. We have, um, in our backyard, we have mesquite trees and they're beautiful and they give us great shade, but they give off this little yellow pollen that covers everything. So um, I have probably 15 or 16 tomatoes. So I am jarring, I, I have six jars in the, the cooker, the, you know, sterilizer, the water bath. The, I don't know that I'll fill six up, but there's nothing worse than not having enough jars and, you know, ready to go. Could I do this with one or two tomatoes? I mean, you could do one jar, yeah. But it's, I'm gonna do six because I just figured I wanna use this up. So again, the time, and with the time, I do have a fancy herb. Hold on a minute. My cousin Kathy bought me this. It's an herb thing and I never really used it. So what you do is you put your herb into the size groove Clamp it closed. Yeah, I think these are too small for that. Yeah. I think these are just too delicate for this. It, it just goes right through. Maybe that works on the oregano. Let's see. Let's get a piece of oregano here. It might work on the oregano. So I don't want that leaf off there. I don't want that leaf right there. Okay, so you put it where the stem is. She bought this for me for Christmas one year and I never used it. I just, I forget about it actually. Yeah, I probably won't use it. Note to self, don't buy one. I guess, I don't know what you would use it on now. Let's see, maybe if I put this in the smallest, smallest one. See, it's it gives you a couple, but it's still, yeah. I'm one of the I'm one of those purest kitchen people who believes that you don't need one certain item to do one certain job. You know, I'm not a a big fan of all these specialty things in my kitchen. Not at all. I mean, there's some things that help, but like the mandolin I had, I broke it. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that cute little thing that I'll never use again. So I'll probably send that to somebody. So let me tell you about the water bath. So the first thing, when I got my jars out and I picked the size jars I wanted to do, um, because I don't want to make big batches of this to sit in the refrigerator, it's just Billy and me. So I wanted smaller jars, but I do want the wide mouth jars. I really like the wide mouth jars for myself better than the, the narrow ones, but I did three and three. So I pick the jars I needed put them in there and cup, filled them with water and covered them with water. So there's about this much water over the top of the jars. And they're just going to boil in that water bath um, until I'm ready to use them. So once it gets to boiling, I will take, turn it, the heat down a little bit so I don't crack my jars. Now, as far as the lids go, a lot of people talk smack about lids. And I'm going to tell you what I've used. I don't recommend any certain way, but um, I've learned a couple things over the years. And so I've done a lot of research on this, but again, this is what I use. You are um, going to use whatever works for you. So they tell you not to reuse the, sealed, uh, the, the sealing lid once you've used it and there's a really good reason for that because they are afraid that if you when you go to pry it off and you bend it it won't seal correctly that makes perfect sense to me in the past i never did that i always reused lids because you know i'm a frugal chick but i do understand that and i do um think that that is a good practice so what i do is i have once i've opened up a jar for some whatever reason if I'm going to use something and that lid I mar mark it once I've cleaned it and everything else and I'm done with it I put it in a container that says used lids so what I use those for is like when I make breadcrumbs 
and I'm not worried about the seal, I'll use the used lids for that. This way I'm not just throwing them out. But um, you need a little bit more oregano. I'll just keep putting time in here. Um, as far as jarring like this, I'll use new lids. The rings, it doesn't matter because once it's sealed, I take the rings off anyway, so it doesn't matter for that. Um, let's see, what else did I want to tell you about the rings? You also want to look at the actual outside ring. If it's rusted, now I don't leave my rings on it, so if it's rusted, I take it off or I throw those out or recycle them. Um, but those you can reuse because I, I, another thing that some people say, oh, I leave my rings on. That's fine. But I used to too, <clears throat> until I did some research into it and I understand now why they take it off. So I do take my rings off once they've sealed. But if they're rusty, they go out. So I always check my jars, there's no cracks. I also check my lids. I use new lids for something that needs to be pressure canned or um, water bath. And then my old lids, I also on the rings check for rust. So that's just some information for you guys. Okay, I'm gonna turn these off and get to check. Okay, so I'm still cutting, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what bruschetta is. I'm sure you all know what bruschetta is. Basically, it's, a, it's an appetizer that's um, like a little salad, okay, that you put on toasted Italian bread with some garlic and olive oil. When I make my bruschetta from scratch and homemade, I always put olive oil in the mixture. One of the things you can't do if you are water bathing or it is not recommended that you do is um, jar anything that's high in sugar with no acid or that doesn't have a lot of acid to it. So you would add an acid element. Like if you're making pickles, you add vinegar, okay? Um, and nothing that's fatty, no oils. And you could do that with a pressure cooker, which I don't have. Um, they're very expensive and I just don't know that I would use it as much as, I don't know, I'm, I'm still contemplating it, I don't know. So the thing about it is, is we're gonna make this bruschetta, but it's gonna be like partial recipe. So that when you open your jar of bruschetta, you'll add a little oil to it to kind of cut all this vinegar down, right? Now, another thing about bruschetta, you, it's made to get a spoonful to put on a little piece of toast. So I wanna show you how I chop my onions. Very, very fine. I also did the same with the cucumbers. The tomatoes will be a little bit bigger, but the whole idea is that you can use it to, um, you know, to put on a piece of toast. So you don't want it really chunky. You want it a little less chunky. Now, some of this cucumber is very watery, which is fine because that'll help dilute the vinegar mixture that I have. So we're not gonna put oil into this recipe, but when I go to use the bruschetta, when I take it out for a family picnic or whatever, I will mix in olive oil with it, and that'll give it a little extra flavor. So I just want you to know we're not gonna use oil for this because of that reason because you're not supposed to water bath anything with a high fat content. Um, I have done a little bit of oil in some of mine, but never, you know, as much as it would take for this recipe. So I'm almost done chopping. And then by the time I'm done chopping, my bottle should be sterilized and ready to go. And then I can show you the next part of how we do this recipe. So I'm gonna just finish this cucumber. And the cucumber is gonna just give it a little brightness, a little green color to it, which I think is gonna be really pretty. I mean, we'll have our herbs in there too, but I just think this is gonna look beautiful. Now, if you make this in the summertime and you have to go to somebody's house and you have to bring an appetizer or you wanna bring an appetizer, it, this is not the easiest appetizer in the whole world. You grab one of your jars from your pantry. Someday I'll show you my pantry. It's a little unorganized right now. But um, you grab a jar, maybe a small bottle of olive oil and a loaf of bread at the store. Go to your friend's house, say, can I have a small bowl? 
put your bruschetta, put your olive oil, mix it up, put some extra um, garlic in it if you feel it needs more, slice up the bread, put it out, done. And it really doesn't cost you that much. I mean, these tomatoes were on sale, plus I have my own tomatoes. If you have a big garden, it's a great, great um, appetizer for you to use. You also could take it and add the bruschetta with some cream cheese and mix that up a little bit to have like a, a, a soft cheese spread if you wanted to do that too. So I'm gonna continue. The last thing I have to do is cut the tomatoes and then I can show you the process. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, the tomatoes are chopped. That took a lot. So I counted 18 tomatoes, medium-sized tomatoes that I had. Um, well, maybe 15 medium and three or four small ones. So I chopped them up. Some people leave the seeds in, some don't. Some of this I did leave the seeds in, some I didn't. So it's up to you. Now, I've got mostly tomatoes. I'm gonna to take my cucumber. And this is, remember, like one and a half cucumbers. I'm gonna add that to that. And remember my paper bowls, because cleanup is a breeze with these. Yep. Okay. I have my fresh herbs. So I'm gonna just throw them in here. I do wanna make sure that they're broken up. So I'm gonna just look, throw that all in there. That looks great. Give it a stir. Okay. Now, I have a whole onion here. I don't really want it to be too oniony, and this onion was a little strong. So I'm gonna add maybe a half of that. Not adding the whole thing. It's fine that I already have it chopped up because I'll use it in something when I'm cooking this week and it's already cut, so that's good. So here's a big bundle of oregano that I wanna break down. Okay. Okay, so see how the cucumber gives it a little bit of green? You got the little bit of red onion. I might add a little bit more onion. Boy, I don't want it to be too oniony, but okay. Okay, now, my jars are about ready. I'm gonna pull them out with my trusty tools. So we're gonna move this to the side. So when I'm working with my jars, I always have spare towels. Yes, these are ripped because they're older towels, but they're clean. But this is, um, just protects everything. So I always lay down a clean one of those. I have my little magnet and I have my, this is my um, funnel. This needs to be sterilized. So I'm gonna throw this in here real quick while I'm getting everything else ready just to get sterilized. And then my jar picker upper. I'm sure it has a fancy name, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so let's see. Should I show you how we do the jars? Okay, move you over. Okay, so in the bottom of here, I am sterilizing the jars, and I reuse my jars. So some of these jars are going to look a little... Well, I'll show you. Okay, so the first thing is my magnet. So I'm gonna take my lids up very carefully and I'm gonna put them on my towel with the side that goes to the food up because I don't want anything to touch it. I want them to be sterilized. So we'll do the three large mouth ones first. See how much I get in. I'm probably gonna need more jars. I, there's a lot here. And uh, so we'll see how that comes out. In there. Oops. So I did six, three large mouth and three narrow mouth. Dropped it. So they're on the towel. And again, the sterilized side is up. Now, move that funnel in there. This is my jar picker upper. The rubber side goes to the jar. So you open it, squeeze tight, 
get all the water out. And these are very, very hot, which is another reason I put them on the towel. It just insulates them from hitting that cold butcher block. Again, this isn't a hard process, it's just a little time consuming. So here's one of my reused jars, it says steak seasoning. So that'll be one for me to keep at the house. I couldn't get the sticker off, I tried. So I bought new stickers that are um, for your jars that um, are made by the company that I buy my jars from. And um, they, they're disposed, like they, they dissolve, okay? All right, so this is still going. So I'm going to keep that at eight. The water bath is still going because I need it. I'm going to put these jars back in it. I'm going to take my clean funnel out. Oop, dropped it. Okay. And put my lid back, keep that nice and hot. My brine has been cooking, so all the salt's been dissolved. Remember, there's just vinegar, salt, and filtered water in here. That's all that's in there. Okay, show you that in a second. I'm going to move everything back, and we're gonna start loading these jars. All right, you ready? Okay, one other thing is this is distilled white vinegar. This is gonna help us seal this. And um, I'll show you what I mean in a second. And then garlic powder. I forgot the garlic powder. Okay, so I have six jars. We're going to start with the six jars. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of garlic powder. So remember, I put always garlic in my recipe, but I didn't want to put fresh garlic in it. So in each jar, I'm going to just put like half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I need garlic powder. Okay. I've got the fresh herbs in there. I am going to add um, some of my dry Italian seasoning to that mixture, just because there's a little rosemary in that too. I think that'll taste really good. All right, give that a stir up. Now we're ready to load up our jars. This is the best part. Okay, so you use your funnel, put it in your jar. Now with the big mouths, you don't really need the funnel, but I'm just gonna show you how it works. So I'm gonna scoop my tomato mixture. Again, not touching anything, but trying to keep it as clean as I can. And that's another reason that I sterilize the funnel. Now that might be enough in there, so. Okay, so I always wanna leave like a quarter of an inch head space. So there's a little bit more room in there. Add a little bit more to that one. Next one, I'll go to the small mouth one. So we've got garlic. And again, once I get to open these up, when I go to use them, I'll give it a taste. If I think it needs more garlic, I'll add some fresh garlic. And so, but this is the basis of, you have it already, you know? Probably overfill, so push that down. So that one, I have a little bit too much in. So we've got to take some of that out. Because it'll, it'll be too hot. It won't cover. I don't want to touch it. There we go. Oh, now I need more in there. Let me... All right, next jar. Let's 
So the prep time is really what takes the most time. And once I get these in the water bath, I can go do something else and it won't take up a lot of my time. So I'm going to push this down, push this down a little bit, push this down a little bit. And then with my little spoon here, I'm gonna add enough to again, fill that up. I wanna get in as much as I can. Okay. Lovely. Next jar. Work that one. And push it down. Okay. Actually, it might six jars might be all right. Jeez, I'm amazing. I don't know how I do it. It's funny. I don't. I just came naturally to jarring. Um, I mean, I taught myself how to jar. Nobody really taught me how to jar, and it just seems every time I do it, it comes out really good. So maybe I'm just naturally prone to being a jar, if that's such a thing. Okay. Perfect. Let's smash that down. Give this one a little bit more. And then give this one a little bit more. So we want to kind of work kind of fast because we don't want the jars to cool down too much. Okay. I'll tell you what. We might not need the fifth one. Amazing. But do you see how I had the extra? I would have had to do a whole wait time for a new clean jar if I hadn't pre-sterilized that. That's it, dude. That's it. It's in there. So, what I'm going to do is, because that's not totally full, I'm going to take some out of this one. I'm going to take some out of this one. That one's good. I'll take some out of this one. Okay. All right. Now, the next part is putting the brine in. So I have a ladle. I'm going to dip my ladle in the hot water for a second. And then it's going to go in our brine mixture. So now what I'm going to do, where's my little funnel? Christine. Okay. So I'm going to add the brine to it. And I want to make sure that I add enough that covers the tomatoes, but leaves a quarter inch at the top. I can always add a little bit more, so we'll just do a little bit at a time here. It smells really good. To get down and the bubbles go through everything and we're going to give it a little poke here in a second. I'll tell you what I mean by that. So I have these chopsticks. So what I like to do is just poke around getting all the air bubbles up to the top. Just like Beautiful. Just making sure that the brine gets around everything and all the air bubbles get up to the top. So we don't want to catch any air bubbles in there because it could cause bacteria to grow. We don't want that to happen. Now, since I did that, you can see the level went down a little bit because, um, you know, we're filling up voids in there. So. I'm gonna add a little bit more to this one. A little bit more to this one. That one might be a little too full. Okay. I'm going to take this out just a little bit. Just because. I'm gonna take some juice out of that. Some juice out of that. 
juice out of that. Juice out of that. Now we're going to seal them. Okay. They look pretty uniform now. So to seal them, I get a clean paper, piece of paper towel, and I dip it in the white vinegar. And then I want to wipe around the top and the top. This way, if there's anything on that lid, it won't keep it from sealing. So, and this also kind of sterilizes the lid a little bit. The vinegar gives it a little bit of disinfecting kind of thing. Okay. Move you to the side. Because I do want these to seal good. All right. Got quite a mess going on. Now we're gonna put the lids on. I'm gonna do everything I can not to touch the top of the lid. So I'm gonna hold it by the side, turn it upside down, place that on there, place that one on there, place that one on there. And I need two narrow ones. And then I'm gonna get the rings. And these are all used rings, but they're only to hold them on. So I'm gonna put the ring on and put it just slightly tight, the hand tight, but not like super, super tight. I'm gonna tighten them again in a little bit. So we've got all of our rings on there. So make sure that they're tight enough. And now they're going back in the water bath. So, I need my handy dandy jar holder. Oops, upside down. And I'm just gonna lift them up and put them in the water bath. So they're gonna water bath for about 10 minutes. It's not quite boiling water in there, so I will turn it up a little bit. I didn't need it boiling when I was disinfecting them because they were in there for a long time. Oops. That one wants to go overboard. Okay, so I'm going to turn this up to nine. Let it get boiling. It's going to be in there for 10 minutes. And while it's in there, I can clean up the rest of my mess. Very, very simple. Just a lot of prep work is really what's going on here. So let me clean up, get everything out of the way, and I'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay, they have been in there for 10 minutes. It's gotten to a boil here, so I pulled them out, tipped them over to get the water off the lids, and also to move any air bubbles up to the top. I put them on this clean towel that's on top of the butcher block so that it's not a shock to the cold of the butcher block to the bottle. So I don't want it to crack. And if you're real lucky, you might hear that pop that I always tell you about. It may take a little while, so you might not hear it right away. Okay, they look really good. So, what I will do is get my towel and just wipe the lids off a little bit with the water. The rings probably were loosened a little bit, but that's okay because they're coming off anyway. But while it's cooling down, I do want to make sure they're a little tighter. I do notice this ring has got a funny shape to it, so that one's going to probably have to go out into the trash. Okay, so hear how that kind of sounds hollow? It should be an even, you should hear that even tap when it starts to um, cool down. So there's, it's hot inside, it's hot on the outside. It's gonna start to cool down and that's gonna create that vacuum in there. Once the, the vacuum is done, I will take, let them sit for like 24 hours on the shelf, take the rings off and then they can be put up into the cupboard and I will mark what they are so I know what they are so that when I'm ready to open them, I can. And again, all I will do is when I open it, is add the olive oil, taste it, make sure that it doesn't need anything else. At that time I can add it, but it's a quick, easy snack for the summer. All the garlic powder on the bottom 
don't know if you can see that. Let me see. All the garlic powder on the bottom. So I do want to give it a little shake up, move that garlic powder around, but it'll still get infused with the flavor. So maybe next time I'll add the garlic when I'm putting the mixture in. And that's it. I've cleaned up everything. All I need to clean up now is the water bath and the brine, and I'm done. And I'm on to my next project. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, once the lids cool down, I will show you what I mean by being able to pick it up without the vacuum breaking. And that's how you know that it's totally sealed. But for now, they need to cool. Okay, so these have been sitting for a while. And I gave them a nice little shake up just to get that garlic moving. Can you hear how it sounds full now? Like it doesn't sound hollow. So now we're gonna do the final test to make sure that we, it was processed correctly. So I'm gonna take my ring off, okay? And I'm gonna lift up by that lid and see how it doesn't come apart. That means it's sealed properly. I'm gonna let these sit for a couple more hours, label them, and then put them on my shelf, ready to go. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, if you wanna try this out, you just need a pot of water, try one jar. Go to the Goodwill, buy one jar. Make sure you have a new lid um, and just try it. Put it in your, if you don't wanna put it on your shelf, you're afraid, put it in your fridge. Open it up in a couple days. We do want it to like marinate, so we don't wanna open it too soon, but boy, that looks pretty. That really looks good. And then with the oil, and then the other thing you could do if you wanted a little bit more tomato-y, when you go to open it, get some tomato paste, maybe a scoop of tomato paste, and put that in there. Or put some fresh tomatoes in it too, just whatever you like. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'm on to my next project. Bye guys.